So this summer we've had a huge uptick in bobcat fever cases or cytosone felis or cytosoonosis. Um, last year, I think all year long, we had maybe eight cases. And so far in the last five weeks, we've had around 15. And my little outdoor cat, Guido, he uh, spends most of his time outside. And last night he stopped eating, um, looked really lethargic. I looked at his mucous membranes, they looked a little tacky. And then this morning I ran him in here uh, early and he's got like this bright orange urine and got some other signs. Let's go check him out real quick. So Guido's eyes don't look as bright and cheery as they normally are. And his attitude, you can kind of see he's hunched up and lethargic. Um, a little bit dehydrated. The skin's not popping down to where it should, like it normally does. It kind of stays tinted up. Um, if you look at his back legs, he's got a little bit of urine on him, and it's like this bright orange color. Yeah, video's not showing it that well, but that uh, color could mean we're um, having some problems with our red blood cells lysing and we're releasing some some of the stuff that stays inside of them. Um, so. What we do to check it out is we grab a little blood sample and I got a couple of them here. CBC and a chem and we'll get uh, our white blood cell levels and our red blood cell levels, platelets and all that. And then we're also gonna run a uh, blood smear is the other big huge thing because that's where we're gonna see uh, the actual organisms on a slide. So I'll show you that in just a minute. Here. So I took a little drop of blood, put it on a slide, smoothed it out and uh, now it's sitting with the stain sitting on top of it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of these blood smears real quick. See if this thing will focus. I don't know if it will. So I got bad news. I think he's got it. There's one right in the bottom left right there. Ah. So the kind of at the five o'clock position on there. There's a little bleb of something inside of one of those red blood cells. And it's tough to see through a phone and a microscope, but that is a organism I don't wanna see. So he's got the daggum disease, dang it. So now that we know what's going on with Guido, I already started his treatment. He's gonna get a shot of atropine. Um, we're gonna get the IV fluids hooked up and then we're also gonna get uh, a shot of what's called Imazole, one of our treatments of choice for this disease. Um, I go kind of higher on the dose. Uh, there's a range and I go kind of higher and I seem to have better success if I go a little higher. If we go too low, we have problems. So Guido, buddy, I'm gonna fix you, you little stinker. Mwah. Guido got his imazole and his atropine and everything, and he's been on fluids for a little bit. You can kind of look inside his ears. They look kind of yellow. Yeah. And that's not good. If you look at the gums and everything, they're going to be a hair yellow, too. And that's him getting jaundice from his liver starting to have problems. So he is scaring the heck out of me. Get through this, dang it. Even though I have him on pretty good prevention, he still had a tick on him. And this one's dying slowly, but the problem with bobcat fever is they can transmit the disease before they die. They can bite them, transmit the disease, because it can happen faster than their, the kill time of any of the topical or internal uh, parasite control medicines. Now, this isn't a Lone Star tick, which the Lone Star ticks, the ones that are gonna have the the parasite inside of them and carry the bobcat fever but i mean if he's got this one that means he's had other ticks and since i saw the parasites under the microscope he got it somehow and it had to have been through that bite from from a tick so so the big thing is is this disease sucks because we can't really prevent it in any of our outdoor cats we can try to kill off the ticks around our house and around the woods around our house with pesticides but um you're not gonna guarantee that you're gonna get rid of all the ticks. And then the only real way is to keep them inside where they can't get outside. And if you have a cat that really likes being outside like Guido does, then that's just a lifestyle change for him. And even if he's inside only, 
I know I've picked ticks off myself when I'm sitting in my bedroom and I go, oh my gosh, when did this get on me? And so technically we could be the, the fomite that brings in the parasite into our own house. It could fall off of us, off of our pant legs, and then get on our animal. So really, being inside cuts down your risk a lot, but even even cats that have uh, that are indoor only, I still if they're showing these signs, the yellow color of their skin, um, they're lethargic, they're not eating, and it's the time of the year where the ticks are out. I worry about them. I just gave Guido some antibiotic too, and force fed him a little bit. He still looks like crap though, scaring the heck out of me. His fever's up to 105.7, which is boiling hot, so worrying the heck out of me. Keep hanging in there, stinker. Uh, it's about 9.50 right now. I'm doing one of my checks on Guido for the night. I'm worried about him. I got some of my other hospitalized ones in here from doing some fracture repair today. Yep, that's a tibia sticking out where it's not supposed to. They're doing good. Um, got a little kitty in here that has a little injury. and She's doing well. Um... And then, yeah, everybody else in here is doing really good. But Guido's wearing that. His uh, third eyelids are still protruding out pretty bad. Still real lethargic. And his temperature is still pretty high. So the goal is we'll get him some force feeding going. And if he's not sucking it down, then we're probably going to end up doing a nasogastric tube or something. Get him some nutrition. I don't want him going uh, into hepatic lipidosis on top of everything else. Dang it. He's actually lapping it up kind of as I'm giving it to him real slow. So that's a good sign. Hopefully he starts feeling a little bit better. I'm finishing up giving Guido some meds so I can get out of here and uh, come check on him in a little while longer. I, uh, I had a client kind of offend me a little bit and ask me, well, do you do the same thing if it were your pet? And uh, I was like, yeah <laughs> i uh i've treated now i think i'm up to this probably i think it's either my 10th or my 11th bobcat fever case this year um and i'm sitting at uh seven have pulled through and i've lost three um so yeah he's my 11th um and every single one of them have come in here multiple times every night, then the same kind of treatment, giving the same care as I would, exactly what I'm doing for Guido right now. It kind of kind of irks me when people act like, oh, you, well, you don't care as much as you would care for your own pet. It's like... Hopefully when I come back here in a couple hours and check on him again, he'll be doing a little bit better. I'm hoping for the best. We'll see, though. It's 12.36. Um, just got done playing a flag football game. We're gonna see what Guido's doing here. All right, buddy. You're lifting your head up a little bit better. You wanna come say hi to me? It actually looks just a tiny bit better. Actually looks just a tiny bit better. His eyes aren't quite as glossed over looking. You doing all right, buddy? I'm so sorry. Stupid disease. You want to eat some, buddy? Thinking about it? You don't have to stand up. Back down. I'm so sorry, buddy. How about that? A little kibble? Yeah. We have to force feed you a little bit. Stay here till 2 in the morning, huh? I actually got him making biscuits just a little bit. Now he's not going to do it. So maybe he is feeling a little bit better. I hope so. Yeah, that's good kitty, huh? Yep. 
came in early this morning and uh, Guido died after I checked on him the second or third time. So, starting off the morning strong. Freaking dang it. <sighs> I hate diseases like this, they just suck. You know, even if you follow everything to a T, do everything for them, still have a chance of them not making it. Oh, I'll have to get myself back together and start working on everything else we got to do today. I got done telling Jace about Guido passing away a little while ago, and he actually ended up taking up a lot better than I thought he would. He had like a look of kind of terror and concern, didn't he? <laughs> At first. Yeah, well, that's why I waited to tell him because yeah. I was scared he was going to cry earlier and I couldn't handle it. But I think we prefaced it pretty well with, like, this is something that happens to everybody eventually. And he was like, yeah, when they get really old. And I was like, or if they get really sick. And he seemed to do okay with it. So I don't know how much he actually understands. But at four, he's pretty smart. So I don't think he misses a lot. Camden actually almost reacted more, which was kind of surprising. He was like, Guido died? He put him in his prayer and, at bedtime. And Gu oh, yeah. And Camden even prayed for him at bedtime. So. He said, Guido sick? And I was like, well, yeah, but now he's better and he's in heaven. <laughs> yeah. So. Ugh. That was like our first real, like, death that the boys have dealt with, isn't it? Besides our fish. Oh, yeah, the fish was the other one. But they're getting older and they're starting to catch on more. Oh, so big thing for all the other pet owners out there is cytozoonosis is a big deal in southwest Missouri and probably all over Missouri. It's one of the first places it was diagnosed, and we're having a mega stupid outbreak. Um, later on today, after Guido died, I diagnosed two more cats with it today, literally. So I'm up to 13 cases myself. Dr. Sexton has a couple more, and my dad has a couple more over the last five and a half, six weeks now. Um, our success rate with treatments at like 64% when I did the math. Um, now there's some of those that have elected to try to do at home care and not do IV fluids and everything because of financial constraints. And some of those, I don't know how they've done because they haven't called me and told me. And, um, some of them it's too early to tell like the two that went today. But, uh, the big thing is if you got an out a cat that spends any time outside, um, your prevention isn't going to prevent the disease because the tick's going to bite them before they die and they can pass it on. Um, so trying to keep the environment as tick-free as possible is a big step. And I do that, and obviously it didn't work for me because Guido likes to go hang out in the deep woods where there's <laughs> not anything I can prevent. Um, but, I mean, just tough. It's tough. And this outbreak's, like, ridiculously bad, so... Uh, watch for those signs of not eating, being lethargic, um, looking like they're a little bit dehydrated. They'll, they'll try to tell you, but sometimes it's a little bit too late. So try to catch them soon.